So a lot of people recently have been discussing the World Economic Forum. Since their president, Klaus Schwab, has openly admitted that his organization has penetrated the cabinets of many prominent European parliaments. So now that we have official validation that many laws being passed in the Western world are influenced by unelected bureaucrats, allow me to attempt to unravel what these people actually believe. If modern society is openly being guided by the World Economic Forum, then what do these people actually believe beyond their vague PR statements and happy stock photos on their website? Let's begin by analyzing Yuval Noah Harari, Klaus Schwab's top advisor. On the World Economic Forum's website, they list Harari as a historian, philosopher, the best-selling author of Sapiens. But what really stuck out to me is the word philosopher, because he seems to have the exact same philosophy as a lot of influential people, from Ray Kurzweil to Klaus Schwab, people who are really behind this whole transhumanist movement, where they believe that it's up to elites to really create this sort of utopian future. Basically, a future by created by atheists, without the idea of God, without divine law, which I understand if someone is an atheist, I personally am not, but I have friends who are atheists. But just understand that these are very powerful people who influence a lot in from governments to corporations, and they really, really believe that it is up to them to create a better society, for better or worse. So that's why this is really interesting to dive into, like, what do these controlling elites really believe? What are they actually trying to implement in society? Granted, I do not think they will succeed. I think they're going to fall flat on their face, and they're incredibly naive and out of touch. So don't be afraid of anything I'm about to tell you. I just want to expose how high-level transhumanists view humanity and what they're going to attempt to implement onto society. So let's take a look at some Harari interviews. Computer science and big data algorithms and so forth, uh, it's becoming much easier to hack human beings and to manipulate them. Uh, Homo sapiens is basically a bunch of sheep that got um, uh, nuclear weapons and atomic power, and sheep with nuclear weapons are far more dangerous than wolves with nuclear weapons. So Harari is actually right with both of these statements, and he understands something that everyone on this channel also understands. It's a great secret of this world. It's that the majority of people are sheep. They are easy to control. They are easy to fool. Everyone who watches my channel, we all understand this. The majority of people, they do not truly understand this to the degree that we do or to the degree that Harari does. However, Harari takes things a step further, and he believes that there's actually no such thing as free will, because Harari is a materialistic atheist. I don't mean materialistic as like a diss against him. I mean, he only believes in the material. The idea that humans have, you know, this, they they have this soul or spirit and they have free will, and nobody knows what's happening inside me. So whatever I choose, whether in the election, or whether in the supermarket this is my free will, that's over. We have the technology to hack human beings on a massive scale. There's no such thing as free will. Very soon people will walk around with biometric sensors on or even inside their bodies and will allow uh, Google or Facebook or the Chinese government or whoever to constantly monitor what's happening inside my body. New surveillance technologies that are now deployed just to deal with this coronavirus uh, outbreak, when it's over, some governments may say, yes, but there is a second wave of corona coming, so we have to be prepared. And there is Ebola, and there is also regular flu. Why not protect people against that too with this new surveillance system? So the tendency would be to prolong it uh, indefinitely. Also, it's the moment when surveillance goes really under the skin Governments are now not not just interested in where we go and who we meet, but even in what's happening inside our bodies. So in other interviews, Harari has described this mass surveillance system as not just dystopian. He acknowledges that it is dystopian, but he said that it is also utopian. And I can't help but draw the parallel between that and our understanding of Christianity and spirituality. Like in spirituality, it's understood the importance of surrendering oneself to God. To Harari, transhumanism and AI is his god, and in his world, 
He is completely willing to surrender himself, surrender his freedoms, even surrender his bodily autonomy, all for his God, which is AI, which is transhumanism. It is a complete inversion of natural order. And the reason why he has no respect for this notion of a God-given free will is because he believes free will is a fairy tale. This is a man who lives only in materialism, where there is no God and no natural order. And Harari believes it's up to people like him at the World Economic Forum to create that order. In my opinion, he just fails to realize that there already is such a thing as a divine order. Harari believes there is no God, and from his point of view, he's correct, because he has not made the decision to desire to know God. So God does not exist in his world. And what's so ironic about this is that during his interview with Russell Brand in 2020, Harari was asked by Brand, well, if people are such sheep and they're just like slaves to the whims of propaganda, what can they do to actually become authentic human beings? Human beings that sort of do have their own free will instead of just being programmable automatons. And Harari's answer was a desire to basically understand themselves and get to know themselves better and a desire to like learn and meditate. And it's like, it's the same concept with God. It like, it starts with that desire to escape just simply living in materialism and get to that next level of spirituality. So let's analyze some more clips of Harari. Data might enable human elites to do something even more radical than just build digital dictatorships. By hacking organisms, elites may gain the power to re-engineer the future of life itself. Because once you can hack something, you can usually also engineer it. Now, in the past, many tyrants and governments wanted to do it, but nobody understood biology well enough, and nobody had enough computing power and data to hack millions of people. Neither the Gestapo nor the KGB could do it. But soon, at least some corporations and governments will be able to systematically hack all the people. And if indeed we succeed in hacking and engineering life, this will be not just the greatest revolution in the history of humanity. This will be the greatest revolution in biology since the very beginning of life four billion years ago. For four billion years, nothing fundamental changed. Science is replacing evolution by natural selection with evolution by intelligent design. Not the intelligent design of some god above the clouds, but our intelligent design and the intelligent design of our clouds, the IBM cloud, the Microsoft cloud, these are the new driving forces of evolution. Today, we have the technology to hack human beings on a massive scale. In this time of crisis, you have to follow science. It's often said that you should never allow a good crisis to go to waste. Surveillance, people could look back in 100 years and identify the coronavirus epidemic as the moment when a new regime of surveillance took over, especially surveillance under the skin. My brain, my body, my life, does it belong to me, or to some corporation, or to the government, or perhaps to the human collective? So I want to reiterate again, none of this should scare you. It's just interesting to analyze what these controllers actually believe. And by controllers, I'm talking about people like Ray Kurzweil, who is the director of engineering at Google. He has written the book Age of Spiritual Machines, which I've read, and he outlines the exact same transhumanist talking points that Harari is so in love with as well. They have pretty much the exact same worldview. Uh, Klaus Schwab believes in all these same things too. So the World Economic Forum also has organizations like Young Global Leaders, which Justin Trudeau is a member of. Also, Global Leaders of Tomorrow, which Bill Gates is a member of. Bill Gates is also a big advocate for transhumanism, mass surveillance, digital IDs, all the stuff that Harari has just talked about in the clips that I've shown. And then Justin Trudeau is another perfect example of someone that doesn't really care about free will. He obviously doesn't care about freedom of expression or freedom in general, as has been outlined for the entire world to see during that trucker convoy that just recently happened. 
So that trucker convoy is a perfect example of why it's dangerous for people to have the same views that Harari does, the view the view of believing that free will is a fairy tale, because then we get leaders like Trudeau that completely disregard the constitution of his own people, which resulted in the violent beatdown and arrests of peaceful protesters. So I think it's quite clear that the World Economic Forum is definitely public enemy number one. So often in the truth community, you'll hear people talk about the system, the establishment, to the point where it's basically become its own egregore, its own like AI hive mind force in a certain way, just like a corporation has an egregore like McDonald's or Walmart. It's like these demonic beings that represent these soulless corporations, and that's how I feel about the establishment, the system. And we look closer into the system on on a micro scale, and we see the systems of the World Economic Forum, these controlling globalists. And this egregore of the establishment is a total psychopath because it gaslights. Like, for example, the truth community has been talking about this for such a long time, about mass surveillance, about being able to like hack human beings through propaganda and left and right the establishment calls those people conspiracy theorists but then the system turns around and advocates for people like harari like klaus schwab like bill gates transhumanists like ray kurzweil and then they openly discuss these things and then when people like us call them out on it they say oh you're you're insane you're being conspiratorial none of that's true but then they'll go and continue to speak openly about it and it's like textbook narcissistic gas Lighting that is indicative of every psychopath that has ever walked the face of the earth. The way I see it, the World Economic Forum is the modern day Catholic Church. Their religion is transhumanism, and they're willing to do whatever it takes in order to dogmatically force people into their religion. They don't care what crimes against humanity they have to commit to get people to submit to them. Like, for those who think I'm sounding hyperbolic right now, take, for example, Justin Trudeau. He does not care that many of his people don't approve of his mandates. He will send in police officers to physically assault you for your health. Harari openly advocates for stripping people of their free will of original thought because he literally doesn't believe that original thought exists. So to him, it's justifiable to program a human being to do what he thinks is best. Because in his worldview, he believes the average person doesn't know better, but he knows better. Again, I can't stress this enough. He's going to fail because their plan is absolutely insane. And there's a reason why it sounds insane to people who criticize conspiracy theorists, quote unquote, is because it is crazy and they're going to fail. So it's understandable why people will be like, why are you saying all this stuff? It sounds nuts. And it's like, yeah, it is nuts. But it's what these like people believe. And they're people that are actually like really influential and powerful in our society.